Welcome to Hawley History Society. This evening's presentation is the tales of highwaymen and highwaywomen presented by Eamon Byrne. For more information, please go to www.hawleyhistory.org.uk. Thank you. So this evening we're going to uh, have the pleasure of Eamon Byrne, who's going to talk to us about tales of highwaymen and if he's there are you there he's gone you're supposed over. to be down here Has he gone okay. yeah. what was i going to talk about oh yes <laughs> tales of the highwaymen and i'd like to highlight highway women as well not made up stories um not just in sorry but what shall we say the british isles uh, we have, uh, well, every country throughout human history has had problems with <laughs> highway men and highway women. And uh, there's no exceptions to that. And there's uh, ancient tales as well of it. And, of course, we've got the Good Samaritan parable in the Bible as well. That's a result of highway men as well, haven't we? But uh, we've got this certain uh, ideal, perhaps, in our heads, thanks to theatre, movies, I didn't say film, Jean. <laughs> Movies, etc., and books, which uh, sort of romanticises highway men and some highway men, women as well. But of course, what we're talking about is criminal activity, isn't it? That undoubtedly frightened the poor people that they approached. But we'll come back onto that again. Thankfully, uh, well, we do, unthankfully, still have highway men and women today, don't we? Uh, called modern ways of uh, stealing and robbing people, which in itself is disgraceful. But we don't ever meet any highwaymen today, do we? Dressed in... Um, yes, keep away now. Do you want me to go out? <laughs> 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 no, we don't, we don't come across, thankfully, any highwaymen and women dressed in tricorn hats, black suits with tight breeches and shined up boots with their covered faces. Has anyone come across any of them at all? No, tricorn hats? No, we don't have any, thankfully, of that at all uh, these days. And if we did, we'd be in for a surprise, I'm sure. Um, so we'll have a look at, oh, I didn't see that word there as well. So thankfully, we have no highwaymen dressed like that. And we, oh, sorry, what, 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 what do you want, sir? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and um, oh. uh, stand and deliver oh, yes. the money on your life. <laughs> oh, you can have my wallet, my purse. Thank sorry, that's what they spoke about. Are you a highwayman? Yes, I am. I am the famous Dick Turpy from Essex. Ah, I see. I hope we didn't frighten anyone. Everyone? <laughs> yes, I, I, I am I'm now. Like that gun. No, it's uh, like that gun. What kind of a gun is that? Then? There is um, like a, a fake foam gun. You like to say fake. <laughs> and that's your uh, special stick as well? Yeah. Right. And I have a, a black silver top cane which I wear men have mm -hmm. when they're walking. I see. And you're well disguised anyway. Yeah. That's it. So I'll give you my uh, purse now anyway. But, yeah. Oh, anything else you would like to yeah. have a good fun? Yeah, um, I've got a little um, history lesson for you all tonight. Oh, good. Um, hi everyone, my name is Liam Hunt and I am Dick Turpin, the famous highway man in the late 1800s. Can I explain what highway men and women do? They say, stand and deliver money or your life. And then they point a gun to the carriage, meaning they take your money or your life away. <laughs> this is how highway men and women rob people. Thank you for listening to my little history about highway men and women. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. You can keep my purse as well. I'll maybe get it afterwards. But thank you very much. I'd like to thank Lumi. He's done a lot of research 
not just on high room, but on other aspects of holy history as well. And doubtless we'll hear about that uh, at la on later dates. I'd like to thank uh, his mother Jill as well. So thank you very much, Liam. Thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you. So the only highwaymen in Forley dress like that. That's interesting, isn't it? But as I was saying, uh, so we have this uh, romantic uh, ideal of highwaymen dressed similar uh, to Liam there, uh, speaking properly and saying your money or your life. We have uh, different ones. Claude Duval, the Frenchman who lived over here in the late 1600s, uh, romanticizing. He used to, allegedly, he would say to married couples in the coach, Sir, if you want to live, give me your purse. Look to your purse, rather. And he'd say to his wife, you look to your heart. Because he was a womanizer. And apparently he even took out the ladies from the coach and said, Sir, if you allow me to uh, dance with your wife, I won't take all your money, just half of it. Allegedly. But can we believe such things? We don't know. Um, Let's just have a look at our first slide then, uh, please, Jean. Robert, anyone know how to pronounce that surname? Dubel. Dubel, or double. It is also spelled double, as we spell twice, double as well. 1711, Lingfield, Surrey, of course. The uh, yeoman farmer, allegedly, and land owner. Um, the carrier, of course, speaks for itself what that occupation is. And as was common in, well, it's still common today, isn't it, really? But smugglers, mm -hmm. he was uh, heavily involved with that and the, the tea tax, etc., etc. But what he also did was some highwayman activity on the routes through into uh, London, over to the West Country, and uh, things like that. But uh, he lived to the age of 82, allegedly doing his highwayman act, and etc., etc. Um, all over the south east and sometimes into towards Bristol, not actually in Bristol. Um, so he survived to later two, which is really quite a good a good age for that period, wasn't it? Really, and given the fact that he was into that uh, activity, fortunate for him that he wasn't shot. What's the next one then, uh, please? Yes, with Richard Dubell. Then, as I say, note the highway robber bit. Um, Thomas Carr was, was one of his victims, as we can see there. And uh, whilst robbing, again, whilst the well and his cronies, if I can use that word, um, the gentleman was shot, uh, was shot and killed. <coughs> you can see there, 1749, another pivotal date. Um, condemned to death after being found guilty in a proper court of law. Condemned to be hanged on the, that date in, at Horsham, indeed. But uh, for some reason, and they don't know why it is, but it does happen from time to time, was given a reprieve and sentenced to transportation, which would undoubtedly have relieved him and his family, perhaps. Um, but he was later, as you can see there, pardoned because someone else, Carey, uh, otherwise known as Jockey Tom, or Lame Jockey, it was said that he sh shot the gentleman that died. And that is why Dubell, or Double Dubell, lived till the age of 82. It is also said, and not proven, that he carried on his activities in those later years to the best that he could, but doubtless he had the help of younger men and women to carry out that thing. It was just something that was, well, seems to be in his blood. So that was one of our well, localish uh, gentlemen. And then what have we got now? Uh, this is. Uh, I was going to say I like this fellow, but I don't like any highwaymen. I don't think anyone would. Jack Rand, John Rand, or Sixteen String Jack. Isn't that a, a lovely name to be called? Dapper Jack, perhaps. He wore uh, rich strings of uh, ribbons in his uh, costumes. He dressed beautifully. He wanted to parade himself up and down the roads wherever he was. I am, I am he, Jack Rand. 1774. Yes, he had that uh, reputation of being the best dressed highwayman in Surrey. Yeah, next 16 string jack because of those things. A great fashion among gentlemen. Um, and he had this dapperness when he 
smoke a pipe and all the rest of that, young as he was. But when you hear of those stories, which were written down, if you were doing highway robbery and you wouldn't want to be parading yourself around, you'd have to be, would you do your robberies just dressed with 16 strings? <laughs> or did he do it on the cover? So was that his, uh, his personality when he was, shall we say, off duty? <laughs> or did he, of course they could plan these, and he did plan these, uh, a stagecoach, shall I use that expression, thing, because they knew the rough times of the runs, uh, later on with the toll roads as well. And they would have informants in docks, etc., who would get money, and they'd say, oh, Mr. and Mrs. whatever are coming across, they're wealthy, well-to-do, they're going to uh, buy a purchase house in London or something like that, so they would have gold and, and money with them. So that information would also help them probably to dress up in the proper attire. But he was, and he ended up, I think we've got another slide in him anyway, haven't we, Keith? Yeah, Somerset. I like that day, occupation criminal. <laughs> <laughs> but that's what a highwayman is anyway, isn't it? But uh, yeah, tried before that famous magistrate Fielding, because we've got uh, Sandy Fielding and John Fielding uh, at Bow Street, another famous venue, of course. And he was sentenced to death by hanging. And you see that was done on the 30th of November 1774 at Tyburn. But, of course, you would have to go to what would be the equivalent of a crown courts nowadays for that. And uh, there's a picture of him too in, in the dock uh, on a, <coughs> with his uh, dapper clothes on, standing there before the judge. Just about, let's see, it. proper, is the word dandy? I think that's what they call it. He's standing there and he's bouffanted clothes and everything and uh, he did have allegedly seven shirts blouses or whatever they called them to put on for each day he was out you know and he would sing and uh, even the prosecutors kind of fell from him in a way and sort of joined in he was just a happy-go-lucky sort of uh, person but of course he got uh, carted up in the wagon to that famous venue Tyburn uh, near Hyde Park now, and uh, that was that's where was his last last days. We don't know how many robberies he did, but it doesn't matter how well dressed a fellow is, does it? If you come up with a musket and point it at you, you would never forget that, would you? So they're not sort of uh, stars or romantic people, are they? Uh, the villains that then uh, sure well they did kill people as well didn't they and injure them etc because not everyone would go oh you can have it some people would fight back would they not mm -hmm. and we'd like certainly uh, there would be trouble that way and of course um, we did not have uh, a full law enforcement uh, agencies uh, way back then although there was parish constables the officer of constable the keeper of the stable we had marshals appointed uh, and I know it sounds like an American word but it came from here sheriffs as well didn't we? Shire East and all the rest of that to uh, help put these away but we also had and we'll come to that later on private citizens who also made a point of detecting these felons and bringing them to justice when they could so that was Jack Ran William Davis another lovely name to have the golden farmer why would a farmer be golden? Well, you can think of the lovely corn that they grow and the oats, whatever. Yes, maybe. William Davies, two spellings of it there, was known as the golden farmer. What's the saying there? Considered one of the most notorious horseback robbers in the, in the 1600s, 17th century. Now, he um, had a cover. He was a farmer. he get on with it. But in his heart, he wanted to be a robber and take what he could to gain uh, more and more uh, money, shall we say, uh, for himself and his family. What else are we going to learn about this, I was going to say gentleman, but I won't, <laughs> this man. So this golden farmer, he was known as the golden farmer by the way because he did like to collect, I'll use the word collect, golden nuggets, <coughs> as well as uh, coinage and money, etc. Uh, definitely the most notorious robber in the 16th, uh, sorry, yeah, 17th century, that's of course, is the uh, 1600s. Now, hanged and burnt, now did I say that word right? Not hung, 
Fantastic. Hanged. Thank you. I get told off for that quite properly. See that, Jean? I got it right. <laughs> Hanged and buried at Bank on Bagshot Heath. But here's where there's more confusion as you read more and more on some of the court registers. Fleet Street, which we all know, uh, he was in Fleet Street. Uh, this is how he got himself Nick, uh, sorry, arrested, Nick. Um, he did a robbery in Salisbury Court, which is, as you know, just off, off Fleet Street. And as he was running away, a butcher, a brave man, ran out and tried to apprehend him. But this villain turned and shot him dead on Fleet Street, just by Salisbury Court. Fortunately, he was apprehended almost immediately, so there were uh, local constables, whatever, out there at the time, members of the public who helped. And he was eventually taken, obviously, to what is now the Old Bailey. He was taken to Newgate Jail, as it was then. Didn't have far to go, really, did he? About a quarter of a mile, really? Something like that. Uh, after a trial, he was found guilty, and it is said in the documents that he was to be taken back to Fleet Street, on the corner of Salisbury Court and, I said it right, hanged on the spot as a warning to everyone. This is what happened here and you're going to get hanged here. But of course we've got this other aspect of him going to getting hanged late, or left swinging shall we say, in uh, Bagshot Heath later on. Um, now what's that? Brock's motto. Brock Adair and his uh, partner in, um, was an Irish, we're talking about the British Isles here really in those in these days, aren't we? He was a, a private <coughs> investigator in the late 1700s, early 1800s, along with a, a lady, um, Kitty Bradshaw Brennan, who hated villainy. And she was a red, a real redhead, but she was also known as a mistress of disguise, despite her red hair. The authorities in England brought her over on numerous occasions with Brock to uh, try and solve, which they did, a number of highwaymen and women cases in London itself. And they did a few jobs for the House of Commons, but that's another story. But that motto speaks for itself. The only person who doesn't make a mistake is a dead person. Well, we would agree with that. We all make mistakes, we have to own up there. But he said, therefore I will make mistakes, but so will those who harm others. I will observe and use their mistakes where possible to bring them to justice. He held on to that, as did Kitty, that motto throughout his life, uh, arresting uh, felons in Ireland and England, along with Kitty. But I thought, it's a great motto, I think. It speaks volumes, doesn't it? Thank you, Jean. Oh, that's it. We haven't got photographs, obviously, but even in Ireland we didn't have cameras then. But uh, we've got a, a drawing of, of them both uh, in action. This is somewhere in the country. Uh, chasing or on their way to uh, solving another inquiry. But as I say, they were brought over here uh, to the City of London as well by the uh, City Fathers for various reasons. But that is another uh, story. Well, that's our typical idea of a higher man, isn't it? And highway woman as well. And uh, yes, it says it wouldn't, but some of the highway women were excellent at dressing as men, disguising themselves, even to the degree of putting on moustaches and beard, or long sideburns. Remember in the 1970s, the big sideburns? Yeah, <laughs> things like that. But uh, that's that's a typical, well, we had Liam, didn't we, up before? He looked a bit like that, didn't he? Yeah. I suppose. But they looked dandy and dapper. And as I said before, would you really be patrolling down the streets of Horley or the village, the hamlets? dressed like that and then suddenly you'd be known, wouldn't you? Would you, uh, would you hide in a forest dressed like that? Or a wood? Surely you'd be green or whatever you could be. But on certain occasions, yes, they may well have been dressed like that. But that's, uh, that's the images we have. Thank you, Jean. We know that name, don't we? <laughs> Richard Turp. It says Knight of the Road, but I'm glad there's two question marks there. Um, and again, and why shouldn't it be, we're entertained, aren't we, in movies, books, theatre, plays, etc., operas, about this activity, and it is entertaining. But that man, Dick Turpin, Richard Turpin, we know there's Butcher's Connections, etc., Essex, um, 
there's myths and legends. I'm going to say one of the legends now that's not proven, so, but uh, we do bring them out that he had a pint in the old black horse here. I can't find any proof of that at all. Uh, not a legend, he rode from uh, the south of England up to London to York in a, a few hours. Impossible at the time, but uh, he may have done it in a longer period than that. But Dick Turpin, and there's been many films and all the rest about him, was a highway robber. He was very active, and I don't know what uh, the volume of money and gold he stole, but he also committed murders. And I won't go into too much detail, but fact, he was also not a friend of ladies, let's put it that way. And um, <coughs> he was certainly a, a person to watch out for. So there's nothing romantic about him when you read the court records, etc. He was just a criminal, a villain, a horrible person, um, but romanticized. He was caught in York because he did something stupid with a letter he was writing and someone else who was in prison as well, uh, who happened to know him in New York, said, wait a minute, that's Dick Turpin, even though he was trying to give a false name, etc. But he was found guilty of uh, uh, armed, well, armed robbery, robbery and various other offences in York and uh, executed in York for all those offences. And I'm sure there are hundreds of other offences that he committed that he was never cleared within. Um, I don't know if we got another one on, on Dick, uh, Richard Dick Turbin. So facts and figures here, yeah, Hampstead, Hampstead, sorry, in Essex. Again, the 1700s. Just before I go on again, I'm not, uh, I'll just get this, I'm not, not waffling or going off the uh, scale, Jim, I promise you. Sure. Um, yes. <laughs> um, the period for highwaymen, why do we, we've had highwaymen throughout the centuries, we have them today. Moped thieves or whatever in the 70s, you remember that? The muggers and horrible ATM thieves and things like that. But they were called highwaymen. We've got that period from the 1600s to the 1850s stroke 60s. It's not dead set, but it's, it's fluid. And with the introduction of railways, uh, more banks, etc., it sort of declined a bit with regards to the rural, um, although other types came in as well. But we've got there Dick Turpin. 1705 in Essex, and uh, that's where he ended up in Nairsmere, just in the Yorkshire, Yorkshire. Uh, and he's now buried in the cemetery in York City as well. Janice and I have been up there, not as a way of saying, hey, put the flowers, just to see exactly is he there. And the, his grave is in uh, St. George's Church in York, and it is not touched by many people, actually. There's no, no great flowers or whatever that, but just historically, we know it's there. And he's uh, there. Allegedly stolen by body snatchers, which were everywhere anyway. Uh, they were soon apprehended, and he was reburied in St. George's, and that's according to the legal church records as well at the time. But he's there. Uh, the prison where he was kept, spent his final days, is now part of York Castle Museum. But it's interesting to go up to a grave of these people and say, oh, they're there. At least, I know it's centuries ago. There's a picture of the grave there. And uh, there's other, it's a normal graveyard, let's put it, if there's such an expression to say. But yes, he's there. But he was not a romantic highwayman by any means. And I know he's been... I think I checked up, there's 30 actors over the 1900s played him in different parts. Mm -hmm. And yes, it's entertainment, but you learn some facts from it as well. Um, yeah, 30 actors, that's a lot of actors, isn't it? So that's uh, Richard for us, Dick Turpin, 1739. So we've dealt with uh, male ones as well. What's next on the gen? Oh, why is he on there? <laughs> I didn't know I was going to have a relative on there, but I thought. Sherlock Holmes, well, you know who that is, don't you? Jeremy Brett. There's arguments. Was he the best Sherlock Holmes? Everyone's different, but he was a good one anyway. Um, the reason that he's there is because I know highwaymen as such had finished because when he was allegedly around, and we know he's uh, a character that's made up by Arthur, Sir Arthur Colin Doyle. Uh, but it's showing us that individuals, as if Sherlock existed, people like him did exist. 
They brought people to justice. They still exist now, actually. They're not uh, sworn in constables in police forces, but we have them. And like Kitty and Brock, going back a bit as well. So that's why I just put them up, because it's not all police. There are private individuals, just like the consulting detective, Sherlock Holmes, and he would have, uh, he actually dealt with a few uh, highway robbers, modern in his time as well. Even though we're now dealing with a fictional character, so I don't, uh, I don't want to mix up with that as if we didn't know. Thank you, Jane. Wow. Has anyone heard of Countess Carla? Another dapper lady, if that's the right word to use. She, uh, love that word, courtier. Known for her beauty and wit, and involved in political intrigues in the English Civil War. Charles I and all that, you can see her dates. Lucy Hay, she was in fact, and this is where it's important to get these investigators out, one of the top spies for Britain at the time. She was, that's what I'm going to say, the James Bond of Rhea, but that's probably an insult to her, I don't mean it that way. She was a wonderful spy, she could get in, into any part of society and dig out the information to tell the authorities. And of course we know there was the parliamentarians and the royalists, etc. But mainly she was a spy, but she also was responsible for clearing up, because she was doing an inquiry as a spy, she cleared up other inquiries as well. Uh, such as robberies and all that. So, uh, again, it's showing us that male and female can do it, can't they? That's something that has to be highlighted. And it's interesting that even now, more and more female composers are getting listened to on Radio 3, for example, and some of the music they play, we've never heard of them before. Why? And now we're hearing wonderful music from the 1600s, 1700s and being played. So that's the name I will never forget, Lucy Hay, and it's wonderful to read about her and how she was, uh, well, the female James Bond of her, of her time, really. Yes, thank you, Jean. Is that, is that Liam? No. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got a picture okay. of me. Yeah. Stand and deliver, that of course was the same, wasn't it? Stand and deliver, what was that? Your money or your wife? Oh no, life. <laughs> yes, yeah, sorry. Now, I don't know, would you have two guns? But anyway, it's still in one. And the wording of some of them was good. Now, Claude uh, Develle had a wonderful saying alleged because he was a womanizer, even though he was a thief and a robber. And he would say to the women, I think that's said before, maybe, um, if you're a male, look to thy purse. In other words, give me your purse. If you're a female, look to your heart. Because he would, I don't know, and all the rest of that. So that kind of thing. So pray, dear sir, can you imagine anyone nowadays robbing you saying that? <laughs> you know, he, almost by saying, you think, oh, that's wonderful, of course. No, pray, no. Deliver unto your hand your finances, or if you wish, your soul. Doubtless and sadly, that did happen, didn't it? Thank you, Jean. <clears throat> okay, types of tea. I think I'll say it properly. Thieves and robbers. What have you got? We've got a whole list. Well, that speaks for itself, doesn't it? Pirates in the waters, and, uh, and many of them as well, male and female. Yeah, very good female pirates. We've got one I know a bit, and uh, Grace O'Malley from Galway, who did speak to good Queen Elizabeth I in person over land issues, etc. But she was a pirate of the time. So, pirate rum runners, again, that speaks for itself, she said. Um, dealing with mum, naturally. What else have we got? Ah, anyone know what foot pads might be? Yes, I do. Please, sir. There were people that couldn't afford horses. <laughs> well, they okay. went, but went out and robbed people anyway. Yeah, they were down there. Indeed. Um, maybe after they'd done a few uh, robberies, they could have brought horses. <laughs> but foot pads, that's exactly right. They were what we have today, really. Uh, muggers on foot, whatever. That's what they were. And it's interesting, everyone here got a padlock somewhere. Yeah, we all know what they are, we'll put it on the case. Padlocks were invented because of foot pads to lock the thing from the foot pads because uh, they would go for different things. Out. So that's where that expression padlock comes from. What else have we got there? Nimmers, well, they would nim running and out of 
grasses and things like that. There was, again, it's really like uh, footpaths, but you can do it rural aspect too and hide and under cover in the, the things. And there was, speaks for itself that one, doesn't it? And uh, we have a highway woman. That's, actually, that was her nickname, wasn't it, Jane? Cut passes. That speaks for itself. They go along Fleet Street or wherever. And, and we still have them today, don't we, really, by lifting mobile phones out, wallets and things. But that's what the expression cut process comes from. Brigands, again, just groups of gangs. Um, there's allegedly, I haven't uh, been able to find a, a sort of a military connotation to that somewhere, but I'll, I'm checking on that one. But still, it was groups of uh, yobos, really, that uh, attack people in crowds and pubs, etc. <laughs> I thought Henry, you had. Oh yes. <laughs> yes. Um, Tories. Now I didn't put that on, by the way. Okay? I'm neutral, but Tories. Really, is that is this a disrespectful place? No. In Ireland, highwaymen and women in the rural districts were known as Tories. Tories. Truly, they were. That's the first use of the word Tory, and they were. It was because they were known as the pursued, because they'd run away. They were the pursued. They were the Tories, and uh, there's a number of infamous uh, highway Tories in Ireland. Uh, Eamon Knock, Ned of the Hills, and all the rest of them. And there's songs like there is with everyone, isn't it? Done about them as well as if to romanticise them again. So. Um, yeah, that's what that Tory means, okay, so I'm not being particular. What else? We've got bandits, again, we hear that, don't we, too, in the Americans as well, but uh, it's used uh, in South America, etc. Speaks for itself. Again, now that's a good word. Sounds like uh, somebody that should be refreshing the roads, doesn't it? Highway agents, but we have them in Australia, in America. There's more, I'm just putting the names out that different countries use. Road agents, again, that looks like someone who fixes the road, but they're known in certain parts of uh, Australia as well as road agents. Although it must be hard to be a highway person than a woman in parts of Australia where the deserts are flat and all the rest of that. But somehow they do get away with it. Again, bush rangers, again, talking about the same part of the, of the world. And a rapper is not a wonderful name. Somebody who's good with a sword and uh, could use it and uh, attack people. And there's another meaning to it, a stabber. So that's one who would go and uh, generally uh, kill the, the people, they're victim, the poor victims. It speaks for itself with the highway man and the, the highway woman. <laughs> yes. No. <laughs> Thank you. Well. Thanks for being politically uh, correct. Yes, there would be. They'd be highway persons, couldn't they? But they're humans who are breaking the law, aren't they? stealing stuff from us anyway. Uh, now, remember the 70s, moped thieves and all that, so that thing? And uh, they, they, yes, they were uh, good to get when you got them, because they could fall off the mopeds very easily when you get them. Muggers speaks for itself. I'm getting the modern expressions now as well. Tom, Dick and Harry. What's that? Well, in Gloucestershire, truthfully, again going back to a couple of centuries, there was brothers called Tom, Dick and Harry. They were actually highwaymen. I think you could write, you could do another talk about them on a separate thing. And that's where we get the expression, oh, it's every Tom, Dick and Harry and all that. But that, the three of them uh, are on record as being uh, highwaymen, robbers, etc in the Gloucestershire area and, and others uh, a couple of centuries, a uh, century or so ago. Thank you, Jane. We've got that word cup purse again. Mall cup purse, Mary Frith. And note the dates, 1580 to uh, 1659. Mall cup purse, what a name to be known as. Well, she was a very dapper person as well. St. Paul's Cathedral, as we all know, uh, Back then, of course, uh, prior to the Great Fire of London, she had accomplices, which were well paid, 
and she would, and again it happens today, a distraction. <coughs> You're at the ATM or somewhere maybe, yeah? Yeah. So we have to watch out for that, don't we, as well? So, yeah, she would use that, cut the purse, and away they would go. Um, she was in and out of prison, it says. Now, isn't that a nice punishment? Burnt on the hands by the authorities for breaking the law, a certain thievery, etc., etc., a few times. Um, she did become recognisable around uh, the town in London as well. A long clay pipe. She had baggy trousers, she was well dressed, and she flaunted herself round. Again, not while she was doing her robberies because you'd be immediately recognisable, or sometimes the occasion did happen when she did that. Wearing men's clothing, breeches, and a doublet. What happened to uh, Malcott Purse? We don't know. We don't know. Well, she died in Fleet Street, actually, of natural, I think, of natural causes. Yeah, we've got the last band hanged there, and put on public display in England, Abershaw, or Abershaw, and, um, I think that was in the late uh, 1800s for that. But of course, Tyburn, as we all know, was a, a place they were hung, and then they went back to uh, to Newgate Prison. On the way to Tyburn, and then some of these ones, uh, well, all of them that were taken up there from Newgate, they will have stopped off near St Giles Church, and there was a pub there where they could have a final drink, as, as if to, to calm them down. And they were allowed one. But someone once, allegedly, so one of the uh, people who were going to be executed said, oh, he got back on the wagon. He wanted to come back down and have another drink. And they said, no, no, you're on the wagon. And we get that impression, expression, to drinking. That's where it comes from. Oh, he's on the wagon or whatever, so he can't have another one. But anyway, that's Jerry. Did I say Jerry? I did. Yes, uh, I might, well, we are allowed to put that up. We're not promoting, uh, again, any cigarettes, but it's history, isn't it? It happened. It's a wonderful uh, picture of this dapper man again about to establish uh, or take uh, money off uh, his poor victim there. So that was, what is it, 1926, our Lambert and Butler, yeah. So again, we can see how the activities of them were used to sell things as well, promoting it. Uh, Stagecoach is Hookwood Common, of course, and there's uh, the gentleman who's uh, written that. Tollgates, of course, um, were brought in. We had, we had one by the Angel Pub, the Woodhatch as well, I think, that's right, if I remember that. And uh, Turnpike Lane and all the rest of those, they were brought in. That, that actually helped in a way, because you had more uh, people around, and stuff there. but uh, we still had the uh, the robberies. Now, Horse Hills, of course. Uh, Brighton became popular, so as the road was improved, as it would be, and I've mentioned the Black Horse before, it was the old one was built. Uh, it's present at the bottom of the hill. The toll gate was also moved now. As I said, lots of wagon and traffic going through, kings and queens as well, everyone. Um, and even, uh, there is one occasion, I think, Princess Alexander also was robbed as well, so they didn't, it didn't matter. I suppose the same applies today if we get to who it was. Uh, Hookwood, formerly Hookwood Common Road, etc. Uh, I guess I meant Prince Regent, of course, was a regular traveller on that road. Now, people, just while I remember there, in those days, the, there was an increase in people going to law uh, solicitors, etc., to write their wills out. Because they were going on a long journey and they had wealth. Most uh, of them would want to have their wills sorted before they went, because they had they knew the chances of getting robbed were very very high, indeed. So that did increase. Thank you, Jim. Star Cottage, Bygate Road, a beautiful building, of course, and everyone here will know better the area better than I will. Um, an alehouse. Did I say that right? Alehouse. Mm -hmm. Lies along the old road. Actually, uh, dear old Richard Cooper and I, in summer, took a nice walk down that way. Uh, actually, we walked further, went for miles, because he liked walking. And I learned so much from him. We passed past that place as well. And of course, there's a link, as you can see, Povey the Highwayman. What's that got to do with it? Well, he, let's see the inverted commas, worked locally 
allegedly in Star Cottage. We don't know his first name. We're still making inquiries on it. The case is not cold. It's still hot. Um, and it's believed that he was <laughs> hanged. I got it right. Hanged at Povey Cross. Now, it's interesting that because I've done some more research, and I'm sure the people here know more than me in that. In the 11th and 12th centuries, where the Norman French uh, monastery, uh, I think it's right, when the Crawley and the monks came out, but crosses, hence crossroads, were put up, nice stone ones, and an inscription put them in, in French. I cannot speak French, so I apologize to all of you, but one of the words, the end word was P-O-U-V-R-E-S, pauvre, which means, I, I did check on this, poor. So something, blessed be the poor, or something like that. And it is said, and I, I read this word, that the S broke off, and um, it became known as Pogi, 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 Pogi. Did that become Pogi? And it's interesting that the highwayman is Pogi, but we're working on that, and hopefully we'll report back with maybe a first name, or was that his nickname, or whatever. But that cross, some historians have said, is still buried somewhere along Pogi Cross, maybe. Um, we don't know, and of course a lot of them got knocked down, of course, around King Henry's time, etc. For, uh, for obvious reasons, so he was allegedly hung there, but we don't know very much else about him. But we will not stop making inquiries. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, we're talking about gallows, um, Hampstead, outside London. Many of this, there was gallows everywhere in the whole country, wasn't there? Um, not just uh, in prisons. Uh, that's quite a number. Five could be hanged at once. And yes, people did go to watch it for various reasons, for entertainment, but also perhaps uh, relatives of the victims say, well, are they really going to hang? Will he, be, he or she be dealt with properly? And of course, the Tyburn uh, tree, which wasn't a tree, of course, was also one of the So there was a numerous uh, hanging spots uh, uh, around our good country at the time, bringing out the crowds. I know it's late at night, and you've got these pictures, uh, that's what we would have seen, a single gibbet, a practice following the execution of locking criminals, these cages, hanging them up as a warning to others. Perhaps it did make others stop and say, I won't do that. Um, there's a, an excellent program, a gentleman called Jules Tour of Guys of London, he wears a bowler hat and he has a, an umbrella. He goes all around the London districts telling you about things like this, and he does the uh, tells you stories about that, but yes, well, there were warnings to people, these gibbets, don't do it. Um, we don't have them now, do we? And of course, Tyburn, which uh, the final journey for many highway men and women as well. Uh, hundreds of them actually there. And it was a big day out for people uh, to see it. And Jack Dandies, those uh, Claude Duvel type ones, would actually have their drink and dress they were allowed to dress whatever way they wanted if they had the means to do so and parade themselves saying, hello ladies, I'm here, yes, I'm going to get home. And they'd be there with their nosegays and the handkerchief sticking out. And that's recorded as well before they got there. They would sing as well and have the crowd singing with them, yes, yes, yes. And then, <laughs> off they would go. Oh, good day out. Yeah, good day out, yeah. <laughs> and yeah, there is, you, you, you all know it anyway, I'm sure there's a spot. Uh, at the, uh, the uh, Marble Arch, the last person hanged, we've got to, he said to us, and John Austin, the highman in 1783, but that's hanged on that spot, because they went back from there, back to Newgate and the various other places as well. Oh, that, that's the, the sign that's still on the ground, the plaque at the bottom. And uh, yes, you see many people looking at it. Thankfully for you, I have stopped waffling. Thank you. So, yeah, thank you. And I just want to say briefly again, thank you to Liam for, and he has done some good research on Harry Rand, and he's doing other subjects as well for the History Group, and his mother Jill, and Brian Seaman for uh, uh, highlighting the whole thing, and indeed, Jean and Henry, and did I pass? Hey, welcome. So, <laughs> thank you folks, anyway. Thank you. Yes, you have. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
close on Ivan. Any any questions for Ivan? Yes, please. What about this hand drawn and quartered? That was a mention. No, because um, when they were done at Tyburn, for example, the highwaymen that we've, we've talked about, that was it, and they would be taken back to their local churches or whatever, uh, unless on occasion they were put up in gibbets. Somewhere hung, what's that word? Hang. Hang on. That pub by the uh, Tower of London, it says hung, drawn and quartered, doesn't it? That, I'm just uh, okay. But yeah, some of them were, yeah. But that's going back a bit as well. The, the, the goriness of it, to, again, to warn all of us, don't you do things like that, or... But a lot of that as well was to do with pol politics, wasn't it? The hung drawn and quartered yeah. thing. I, I, th mm -hmm. I think you needed a sort of higher category of crime, Jane, like oh, treason or treason. something. Yeah. yeah. Would get you hanged or reported. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but even the uh, armed robbery is a high one, isn't it? Anyway, that's a high crime when it's the day. Yes. I think the difference between the hanged and the hung is when they were drawn, quartered and the body was hung. Right. If they were hanged, it was the broken neck. Right. Okay. It's a pity they didn't have the electric chair. We wouldn't have that. We would be. But anyway, <laughs> thank you. Yes. Yeah. Just a, a quick question, really. I know that it all came to a sticky end. But, uh, for for the uh, hobby of going out and robbing people uh, in that manner, um, what what caused the caused it to die off? Um, That's a good there question. Were reasons. Yeah. That is a good question. So, again, the road systems were changing, uh, more open, etc. Because uh, you've got the old wooded ones going through the woods as well. Uh, they, uh, also, there was an increase in law enforcement, even before the establishment in 1829, and before 1829, of an official police force. Ireland and Scotland had the first ones, then, of course. Uh, uh, and as I mentioned, uh, Sir Henry Fielding, it's John Fielding as well, his, his, his brother, Magistrate Dave, they formed the Bow Street Runners. They didn't st just stick around Bow Street and they went all the way out as well, horses. And so we had an increase in law enforcement. Uh, and then of course 1829 with the, the establishment of the Met and the various other police forces as well. So all that helped. The introduction of more banks helped as well, because people would go there and draw money out with receipts from another one, say, down south and take it up and hand it in. Uh, so that helped to do it as well, toll roads, and also the fact that um, there was an increase during the Civil War, because soldiers in the war did not didn't do, but they were very good at, with their pistols and things. Some of them turned to highway. Uh, and then, then we've got the railway coming in as well, and people uh, not using uh, nuggets like they used to and things like that. So it just died down, although it still went as it does today, doesn't it? But just in different ways. Uh, but that's essentially why it just went down. Thank and the word highway men and highway women, we still have them, but it stopped. That's what they like to romanticise that period. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Um, would they really have taken someone um, hanged at Tyburn? Would they have taken his body right up to York? Yeah, they, they actually did think that at the request perhaps of rich relatives or the public itself just to keep the peace. You know, if we had this hero that they wanted to take back, well, we better keep the public because there would be riots and things like that. Yeah, uh, wrap them up and take take them back. Yeah, that that did happen on occasions too. Uh, and indeed, with that uh, the golden farmer, there's a there is a doubt thing. The bag shot he he was buried there. It says and hung there for a while. But he was. It also says he was hung in Fleet Street. Like I said, mm. as a warning, don't do that. You get hung there. How long they were left? Yeah. So yeah, they did things like that. Yeah. Okay. I, I I must tell you that. Um, when I was a boy at the end of the 1940s, we had a, a radiogram at home, a, a record player, and uh, we had a very small record, and it was called Dick Turpin's Ride to York. And I used to play this non-stop. I can't remember much of it, but the chorus went, Gallopy, Gallopy, Bonnie Black Bess, don't let us see your tongue. Tell for dust, gallopy, 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 you must, don't let them see your tail for dust. <laughs> <laughs> and it was all about Turpin's ride, ride to York. And it said, um, he just had half an hour to spare, so he popped into Barnet Fair, to the rifle range he went. But the gun he used was somewhat bent, and he shot the fat girl in the tin. <laughs> <laughs> and Turpin, go to York. <laughs>
that's the extent of my memory on it. So you caught it. <laughs> you caught it. <laughs> there you are. A any other questions for Eamon, quick? Uh, jolly good. Thanks a lot, Eamon. Thank you.